Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome to the Pull Up Show. I'm your host, Mr. BJ Matthews, aka B. Just before we get started, follow us on the YouTube page, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. Like, share, subscribe, all of our YouTube videos, and hit that like button. Y'all enter in. Let's get it popping. All right, so LA Clipper Talk, we back at it. You in the car, you know what I'm saying? We're going to the road, driving right now. The Clippers prevailed and got their first win into a dome last night, 104 to 113. Definitely was a great uh, win for them as far as their momentum goes. Hope they can build off of this. But um, we got some stuff to talk about today because I saw a lot of things that were that need to be discussed. We need to make some decisions. Uh, first off, the Clippers have been 0-4 in their first uh, four games at Into a Dome, losing to Phoenix back-to-back times, Portland, and then OKC on Saturday uh, night. Now, me, myself... I told y'all I'm not going to be giving like a whole bunch of highs and lows. Like my thing is I'm going to wait until the playoffs, the postseason before I start really kind of getting into emotion. But until then, y'all going to just see the real, you know what I'm saying, analytical BJ until till then. Um, and it's for good reason. I've tried my best to, you know what I'm saying, get behind the team emotionally and all that. But you know what? I'm not doing that this year because I've seen the story too many times when things are going well and then something just happens. Right, so I'm gonna look at it more in an analytical sense for y'all and give y'all the actual my my real opinions. So, yesterday, the Spurs. Let me turn this off. The young Spurs faced the uh, Clippers, and the Clippers got the win, 104 to 113. And um, the Spurs are a team. I said to myself, you know, I said to a lot of people, they can be a playing team this year. And I think last night y'all seen that. Um, we were up, they were, we were down 40 to 14 in the first quarter, right? And if you watch the Spurs team, they are the third youngest team in the NBA. And they don't have much experience, right? But they got a bunch of gritty players and they have a bunch of guys who just want to hoop. And you, you know, if you go to the you don't go to the gym or you go to the rec and you just like say, I got to pick my five, you'll probably pick the most, I don't know, youngest five in there. I'm going to pick the, you know, guys who are not known or not established. I'm just going to pick guys just so I can hoop with that wants to play. That's why I look with the Spurs. A bunch of young, gritty guys, Jeremy Sohan, Keldon Johnson, Trenton Vassell did not play last night. Um, I think his name is Champagne. He's a, he's a three-point shooter. Um, they got a bunch of, you know, one, two-year guys, some of you, you know, young guys on that team, but they all gritty and they want to play. And then we add that in with Victor Wimanyama, who is, you know, primarily, you know, supposed to be "Quote unquote," the face of the league. Um, that that that's a recipe that you can you know build on something. Now, my thing is, I'm not even looking at just you know Victor Wembanyama. Why they gonna be a playing team? I'm looking at Chris Paul. He had 14 points and 10 assists in 33 minutes last night. Chris Paul. And I want y'all to pay attention to the game last night when watching the Spurs. Do you see how Chris Paul orchestrates and controls the game? Do you see he's not turning the rock over in clutch situations or, you know, throughout the game and making boneheaded decisions? He'll turn the rock over sometimes, but for the most part, Chris Paul knows how to take care of the ball. Ball secure. That's a point guard. His uh, his assist turnover ratio always is a good assist turnover ratio. He'll have 10 assists and probably like three, four turnovers. That's, that's a 2-3-1 that's a assist turnover ratio. That will work. He's talking to his teammates. He's talking to the coach. He constantly is barking. He's constantly clapping his hands. He's constantly getting on the floor for, you know, uh, uh, loose balls. He's, he plays defense. He's an old-school point guard. That is a point guard that makes winning plays. That is a point guard that elevates their team. That is a point guard that does not hold their team back. You get it? This is why this is why I told y'all yesterday or a few days ago about James Harden. When people said, well, this whole usage rate thing, I said that's bullshit. I don't want to hear that. Because your usage rate is based on your system, how you play. You like the ball in your hands, you like to shoot the ball. You're a, you're not a pass first point guard, you're a, you're a shoot first point guard. That's what you like to do. So don't come back and tell everybody else that you don't you too uh you're too overwhelmed and you have a high usage rate. Shit, that's what you wanted to be. But People, I hope they're seeing that he's not a real point guard. He's a guy who can play make, but he doesn't take care of the rock. If you can't take care of the ball and you have a bunch of turnovers, how are you a point guard? They said the same thing with Russell Westbrook. He's not a point guard. 
Oh, he had 12 assists. Well, yeah, shit, he had eight turnovers. You should never have that many turnovers if you're a real point guard. So people say James Harden makes Zubac look better. Could y'all imagine if Chris Paul had Chris Zubac had Chris Paul? I could guarantee you Chris Paul would make Zubac look even more better than what James Harden is doing. Which I want to talk about that as well because there was something that, that Ty Lue did that I don't know if people caught with James Harden last night. But what I'm saying is Chris Paul makes the Spurs a playing team. Without Chris Paul, they're at the bottom of the West like they were last year. Right, so I got the Spurs in, in the plan, um, you know, possibly. So we'll see with them. But the Clippers, there's a bunch of things I need to get into. First off, I gotta give Ty Lu some credit. I want to start with Ty Lu. Ty Lu managed and managed the minutes yesterday. He tried something different. He said to himself, or one of his coaching staff members said to him, "Hey, this ain't work. We gotta do something else." We got to switch the rotation up. So what he did is he decided to go with more defense and remove himself from the James Harden offense for a little bit. And I know people may think I'm getting on James Harden, but I'm doing it in good reason. When he does well, I'm giving his credit. But last night, nah. Y'all were down to 40-14, to 14, and it was the second unit that got us back into the game. Amir Coffey, Chris Dunn, Nicholas Batum, uh, Kevin Porter Jr., and... Um, who was the fifth guy, if, I, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, well, I know Norman Powell and Zubak were in there, you know, there and here and there. But those four guys, those four guys helped us in the second and in the fourth quarter, right? Now, let's start off with Amir Coffey. Amir Coffey won the game for us yesterday. I don't care what nobody says. Amir Coffey won us the game yesterday. And I've been saying this before. He's our best two-way player on the team. There is no way this dude should not be getting no minutes. He should not be getting no five minutes, 10 minutes. He should be getting at least 20 minutes a game because he can play any rotation. He can guard uh, threes and four, twos and threes and fours, some fours, and he can score the basketball. He got a nice mid range. He's athletic. He's a pretty good three point shooter. He's a very good free throw shooter. You can't exploit him on defense unless you have him uh, guarding a uh, point guard for the most part or an elite, very elite score, there's no reason why this dude shouldn't be on the court. I don't understand. He should not be getting minutes taken away from him. He's been with the team longer than anybody outside of Terrence Mann and Nabisca Zubak, if, if I'm not mistaken. This is a guy that should have been in the rotation a while ago, and he should stay in the rotation. I don't need, not because somebody gets injured, you can plug Amir Coffey in multiple positions. He's a two-way. You don't put that on the bench and say, hey, just stay there. So yesterday, Amir Coffey, Got us back into the game in the second quarter. And in the fourth quarter, he hit two big threes. And he was hustling on the defensive end. Amir Coffey, he keeps his spot. Chris Dunn. Chris Dunn. We got to have this conversation about Chris Dunn. He's our best on-ball defender. All right? Now, I know people don't want to hear this, but... Same way y'all have Kevin Porter Jr. on the uh, hot seat, I got Terrence Mann on the hot seat. A lot of people love Terrence Mann. I love Terrence Mann as well. But damn it, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have no favoritism to nobody. Chris Dunn has been outplaying Terrence Mann multiple games, and not just that. The second unit, to be quite honest with you, has been outplaying the first unit, not named Norman Powell and Abisca Zubak. They have been getting us back into games time and time again. Right and keeping the lead when the when the first unit keeps uh, messing it up in the third quarter and in the first quarters, right? So Terrence Man is on the hot seat like Kevin Porter Jr. Straight like that. Uh, my thing is, if I look at what Chris Dunn does and what he brings to the floor, he had 11 points last night. Right, double digits again. If you watch Chris Dunn play, he tends to have um, he tends to have double digit numbers, and he's a good defender on ball. He's aggressive. He knows how to navigate screens. He's a very very smart defender, high IQ defender. So you're getting as good of a defender and Chris Dunn over Terrence Man. You're getting a better offensive, confident player. Why? Well, that and I said this. I said. 
damn, why did they pick up Chris Dunn if we have Terrence Mann on the court? And I said, that is alarming to me. I said, Norman Powell saying he wants to start is alarming to me. Because my thing is, if you feel like you're going to start, who you starting over? It ain't going to be James Harden. It ain't going to be Kawhi Leonard. It ain't going to be a Vizca Zubak. Who are you talking about you trying to start over? So you talking about Terrence Mann. All right. Well, it looks like Terrence Mann, when Kawhi Leonard gets back, huh, he might be going to the bench. The way Norman Powell and Chris Dunn are playing right now, you might have one of those two starting. And not to mention James Harden. I'm going to talk to you about, y'all about James Harden, too. James Harden got benched yesterday. His ass got benched. He got benched yesterday with Terrence Mann. They both got benched. Harden had 33 minutes. I think he had... What do you have? Uh, 17 points. 17 points. And he had single digits in the rebounds and assists. I told y'all, they went away from the James Harden offense and put themselves in the Clipper offense. Meaning... The Clipper offense is moving the ball around and converting defense into offense. Fast break scoring. San Antonio being a fast break team. And with Victor Wembanyama protecting that basket. Wembanyama had nine blocks yesterday. Nine. So that pick and roll with Zubak, nah, that ain't that ain't happening. Lobs to the basket, that ain't happening. So, what, again, Ty Luke, gotta give him credit. What he said to himself, what somebody said to him, why do I have Harden on the floor if he can't get the lob or the pick and roll? He's just gonna. He, I can't have him on the floor. There's no reason for him on the floor, and that's why I tell y'all with this with James Harden, he got benched. He can no longer do what he was doing before in Houston, right? But he got he got off the floor, and it was the right decision to make. Now every game is different. You might have Harden. You know you're gonna try it again against Philly tomorrow, but. What I'm saying is they made the right decision and they 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 benched James Harden when they needed to because he wasn't he wasn't effective in the game. He only he got effective towards the fourth quarter where he hit that three point shot, but the game was pretty much in the bag. The second unit already did did all the work. KPJ, uh, Chris Dunn, and and uh, Amir Coffee and Nicholas Batum did all the work. They already guys back into the game. Right, Norman Powell hit a big three-pointer in the fourth quarter, you know, at the winning minutes as well. Zubak had a nice dunk as well. But what I'm saying is, we had to make a different move because the way we were losing the vert, that game against San Antonio, and how we've been losing these games, if we don't, if we would have lost the same way against the Spurs last night, it, it, it would have been a disaster. But I'm still, I am still looking at this team like, okay, well, they, they, we have a lot of stuff to, we have to build on because, see, if y'all, if y'all ain't noticing the pattern with Zubak, he's an effective, he's an effective player, but Chet Holmgren, Victor Wembanyama, Nikola Jokic were his three worst games because he went up against actual real good to great centers right so you have to watch Zubak's matchup when Zubak faces you know long athletic uh, centers like Wimbenyama and Chet Holmgren who affect his shot around the basket he's not going to be as efficient you're not going to see no 70 80 90 percent you're going to see like 30 some percent maybe probably a little under 40 but you're not going to see 35, 40% from that. What I'm, what I'm pretty much telling y'all is you have to watch out. You have to watch the box matchups as well. Uh, we got Philly tomorrow, which I don't think Embiid's going to play. I know he's like uh, on the, you know, he's on the road trip. But I don't know if he's going to play. Uh, Wembenyama, uh, Chad, Jokic, players like that bigs like that hell even DeAndre Aiden the other night Zubak's, Zubak's a good center he's, he's able to be very very effective but I'm interested to see when the Clippers bench Harden how is Zubak going to play because if y'all telling me that Harden makes Zubak look like this then what's going to happen if Harden's not on the court to feed Zubak the basketball 
I still think Zubac can, you know, get get what he, you know, be effective on the court because he, he's done it before, even before Harden was here. But the Clippers, they're going to have to, we're only in games, what, six, six, seven. The Clippers are going to have to manage that situation with James Harden because, like I said, I seen something last night where James Harden can get played off the floor. He can because his defense is not up to par and only in spot minutes and his offense can take us out the games. But I thought his man his minutes were managed very well and I thought him getting pulled out the game and putting in uh Mir Coffee and Chris Dunn saved us last night because we needed to make stops and we need to make we, we need to uh to take care of the basketball. So I wasn't against what Tyloo did at all. I was actually, you know, very, very impressed. But um you know Amir Coffee, 21 points. Norman Powell, 21 points or 23 points. Zubak, 17 points. James Harden, 17 points. Good spread of the minutes around. Good spread of the points around. I'll take the dub. I'll take the dub. So we got Philly coming up uh, tomorrow. I'll be at the game for sure. I might do some uh, content as well. I know I've been telling y'all the last few games, but I just ain't had a chance to do it. But tomorrow I might be doing the content tomorrow. And um, yeah, we'll get ready for uh, Wednesday. Pull up, see, pull up, check, pull up, live. Pace out of here like swim, wow.